I call it a day in the life of a parcel, very specifically. For those of you who have known me for a while, and I think I know a few people here, uh, I've known about mail for just the last seven years. No, actually the last 11 years, because I did spend about five years before that uh, at the Direct Marketing Association. So I did learn a little bit about direct mail. And then I spent four years running Pitney Bowes DMT, and now for the last couple of years running Bell & Hall. So I've spent a big chunk of my life in the last you know, seven years actually building equipment, all having to do with mail, letters. And, and as you heard everyone talk about it, you know, uh, single piece first class, crashing and burning. Uh, first class, either going digital or, or kind of stabilizing. Standard class, read direct marketing mail, kind of going digital, kind of stabilizing, and actually becoming dimensional, uh, which the marketing guys know what I'm talking about. You stick things inside envelopes. Uh, and so, so new things are happening. So as, as I think about how do I take this company and grow it, not just make it profitable, but grow it, we are looking at adjacencies. And adjacencies obviously takes us into packages, parcels, et cetera. And, and so you're going to hear one theme through all of these videos, and that is taking all the stuff we know and learned in the, in the industry of making machines for letters and mail and applying them to parcels. So fascinating things happen when you do that. So let's start. That's why it's called a day in the life of a parcel, uh, and not three days or a week. I think the parcel world doesn't know about a day, but the mail world does. So let's start. Um, I'm going to start where everybody starts, right? You know, all of this happens when, when, when uh, my wife goes online and buys something. So, so she goes online. Uh, we are a lot older than that now, but she still does that. Uh, and, and, and by the way, she's a huge fan of Amazon. Uh, and so, so the first thing that happens is this order goes into a system, and, and someone has to actually pick an object, either from a warehouse or rack. Um, we decided a long time ago uh, in, in, that this is a space, it's great, we're going to pay attention, uh, but there's incredible innovation already going on there. I think the Amazon guys, in fact, chaotic picking algorithms, fascinating when you do uh, randomized uniform distribution of objects in a library. The distance you have to travel to actually pick it is minimized. So it's very, very, very cool math, by the way. So but once you've picked it, you've got to do something with it. And, and in the, in the Bell & Howell mail creation equipment world, uh, you know, we, we've spent 75 years building inserting machines, which is actually you take documents, you fold them, you stick them inside envelopes at very, very high speed. In the parcel world, you know, it's, it's a, and then we learned that in order to improve that process, it's actually easier and faster to wrap paper around a document. It's called wrapping. It's called an enveloper. So you can take a process that works at, it used to work at 10, 15, maybe 20,000 pieces an hour. It could speed it to about 30,000 pieces an hour by wrapping. A friend of mine actually told me a great story. He says in the consumer products world, like a candy bar. In the candy bar world, they don't build a wrapper, build a candy bar, and then try and stick the candy bar into the wrapper. In fact, they wrap you know, film around candy bars. So, so this whole concept of wrapping is a very interesting engineering phenomenon when you're trying to do things at very high speed. So last year, uh, if you guys remember, actually this year, by the way, I have an Estonian flag next to my US flag. Last year, I had an Italian flag, because I have these Italian partners that built this fascinating thing called carton wrap. Um, every, and, and, by, and, and, and last year I showed you a machine that was the first generation operated at 500 boxes an hour. And, and every major uh, e-commerce fulfillment DC factory I walked through, you know, they said, oh, we do these things that, and our people are great, we do these things at 100 boxes an hour. Objects come, they put them in boxes, close it, glue it, uh, not label it. Um, and, and, and so, but when I walked and wa when, when you watch them, the operators do 75 boxes an hour. When you don't watch them, it's like 50 boxes an hour. So, so if you actually crank this really fast, now I'll show you this machine. The new one operates at 1,000 boxes an hour. Do I need to do anything, Brian? No, you're going to run it. Cool. So you start with prepackaged objects, uh, varies from 
size of a 6x9 envelope about half an inch thick all the way to about uh, 24 inches cube. Last year I showed you a uh, corrugated roll. Uh, customer who's implemented this wanted fan fold, which is an interesting challenge by itself, finding fan fold corrugated in large stock. Besides dimensioning the object, it automatically scores, cuts. Uh, for Nagesh, it's all highly patented. International patents on scoring, cutting, folding. Uh, and we'll stick the object. So the object web and the corrugated belts meet. And so that's a pre fold. And here the object is going to get popped onto the corrugated. You can at this point also put marketing materials into it, inserts. And there you can see it on the right getting folded. So this could be a carton of eggs, it could be an iPhone, it could be socks, it could be a t-shirt or a sweater that my wife ordered. And if you ordered shoes from a certain e-commerce player, I'm willing to bet you're going to start seeing them coming in these boxes. Uh, then you label it, high-speed labeling. I'm going to talk about labeling a little bit. But very strong boxes, double wall corrugated, fascinating technology. And, and as I said, I think I said that's a, a 10x improvement. Actually, it can be better than 10x. So. You have a line that's running at 50 boxes an hour. Um, you know, you, you can actually get incredible improvements by, by running this line much faster. So, but once you packaged it, um, very often you have to label it. The fastest labeling systems operate at, you know, and, and the DCs I've walked through operate at somewhere between 1,000 and 1,500 labels an hour speeds. And then if they want to get faster speeds, they put them in parallel, so they put multiple labeling systems. Um, in, in Bell & Howell, uh, you know, if, you, if you've ever gotten a change of address, you know, uh, an envelope with a little yellow label, and, you know, Bell & Howell actually invented that labeling system. Uh, Brian, who's my CTO sitting there, I think he may have had something to do with it years and years ago. But our sorting systems, email, mail sorting systems, run, can run up to 80,000 pieces an hour. So if you've taken very fast labeling systems, and try to apply it to parcels. And with that, Brian? OK. Oops, wrong video. <laughs> this is the last one. <laughs> OK. We'll come back to this one. Uh, OK. Signature 5000, labeling. So here, I'll tell you the story while Brian's keying it up. Uh, we've, Bell & Howell's got this patented what, what we call linerless labeling system. And, and we've got this gantry process that actually, uh, while the, the, the arm is moving down, so first of all, it dimensions objects. So it can label objects that are small pack packets to large boxes, uh, perfectly formed to slightly like a bubble kind of wrap. Um, so it's very nice at doing that. And it starts printing, so it understands what the object is, and it starts printing while the arm is throwing. So it can actually operate very, very fast. It's linerless, so it, there's no backing to the labels. So it can print short labels and long labels. Um, you still looking for it, Brian? Oh, do I have to do something? OK. So it's just a labeling system. Uh, we have a few customers who have actually the, the big, very large CPL guy has implemented this, right, Brian? Uh, it's, in, it's in production, so it's beyond prototype, beyond test, it's in production. And it's a fascinating system. You, I mean, you, you don't see too much of it here, but it's from very small to very variable size packages. Very, very, it can run very fast, uh, 5,000 an hour speeds. So again, the ability to take a process, an important process, in a parcel's life and speed it up tremendously. Um, we, we also sold this. One of our, our customers, who's a major private post, uh, was the first customer who was doing pre-sorting of mail 
And all of a sudden, their parcel and packet volume started to explode. So we built a system for them which uses our sorting technology, but now sorts packets and parcels. And do I have to do something? There we go. Parcel manager. Perfect. Um, again, it's, it's, uh, I, for, for, for those who don't work for FedEx, I apologize to the guys from UPS and DHL and all the others. It just happened that this customer is the lord of FedEx boxes and parcels. Uh, but again, uh, dimensioning, uh, singulation, um, it spaces out the boxes very nicely. Um, it, it, uh, we have some patented technology that has to do with, if, you, if you've ever gotten a box from someone, a parcel from someone, you'll very often notice that it probably has somewhere between two and five labels on it. Uh, sometimes handwritten labels, so it'll it, we have some patented technology that, that reads and scans and recognizes prior labels. Uh, we'll, we'll do encoding, we'll put our own label on it uh, in this particular case. And of course, this is a very important part of, of cranking up the speed of processing things once it enters the network. And let's move on. Getting close to, okay. Am I doing something, Brian? Cool. Um, I am, you know, this is a cool space. Um, the, the, another Estonian company, I mean, you know, who was serving beer at the reception yesterday, has that little cute robot. Um, we don't do anything with, with uh, drones, at least as yet, obviously, but we do build technologies that, that enable our customers to track. Um, and, and traditionally, most of this stuff goes to, you know, whether it's a residence, or, or, a, or a retail location or a campus, um, the, the new stuff, and, 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 and I see Walter in the room, is this whole space called intelligent lockers, smart lockers. And, and the best estimate I have is that technology speeds up or improves uh, by six times. And, and really, the, the, the measure there is you need six times fewer truck rolls to deliver to smart lockers than you need to deliver to a home if you're doing parcel delivery. So that's a measure of economic improvement in that network. Um, but that's the current uh, state of the art, and we are in the process of actually unveiling this. We're doing this next week uh, at, at the Durham factory. Another Estonian partner of ours has unveiled something called PackRobot, and that actually has a 3x improvement on smart lockers, and, and I'll tell you why in a moment. And with that, now we need the PackRobot video. So while he's queuing that up, um, when, we, when we first started with this carton wrap system, uh, we didn't realize we were solving, I'll, I'll come back to that as soon as the video runs. Okay, why don't we run this video? So it scans, dim, dim weights, dimensions, and weight, weighs the object. There's a robot, the 3D lift system. Anything from 10 grams to 10 kilograms, and then again, wide range of physical dimensions. Very fast. It adjusts the locker size. Um, I'll tell you why that's important. She gets a text message, gets a QR code on a smartphone, um, scans it, picks it up. Voila. Um, and of course, that can also be used for returns. Thanks, Ryan. And we are almost done. There's, there's, uh, as we were looking at, at taking technologies from mail and applying them to parcels, the, the one part that we found is really hard is this whole thing called returns and reverse logistics. So we found that our jet vision systems that are used in mail to do very high speed very high resolution image capture recognition of marks and, and addresses and things like that is actually also very good at low contrast recognition of numbers. So one application, we actually sold this to our first customer, is returns for cell phones. There are hundreds of millions of cell phones returned every year in every country. Uh, every time you return a cell phone, 
and the operator actually takes it. If you look at the back of your cell phone, the IMEI number is there. The battery is dead, you can't turn it on. You actually put a magnifying glass, look at the IMEI number, click, 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 16 digits, takes about five minutes. This process takes about 15 seconds. So, you know, I say 15x improvement. It's actually better than 15x. So bottom line is you actually multiply all of that, you get about 10,000x improvement. To me, that's innovation. Thanks.